As you can imagine, there's some excellent uh, church history books that are out there. And so uh, when, we were thinking, when we were thinking about doing this book, we wondered, was there a need for this book? And we thought that there really was. Uh, and the reasons for that would be uh, that we wanted to be sure that the book was very readable. Sometimes people think church history is boring. Not to say the other church history books are boring, but this, this particular book is pretty well written. It, it draws you along, it's fairly fast paced. So we try to handle the issue of boredom a bit by dealing with the readability. And then there's another factor that distinguishes this book. Perhaps you know that there are multiple interpretations in history, and we want uh, readers of the book to understand what are the various ways people have thought about the same thing and yet what seems to be the best interpretation of a particular movement, the Wesleyan movement or the reform movement. And the third factor is that I'm just very pleased with the colleagues that I have been working with on this project. Volume one of the church history was written by Everett Ferguson, who's one of the best church history professors in the United States in the area of patristics. Another one of my colleagues on this project is Frank James, who's really an expert on the Reformation. And the reason I emphasize how important these colleagues are is that we wanted to have, we wanted to have a book that really has uh, up-to-date information and real expertise. And these two gentlemen are genuine experts uh, in, in church history, and that's very, very important. Uh, I've taught, for example, out in secular universities, and I think it's very important for Christians to have books that could go down well in a secular university as well as in the Christian context. My own personal motivation for uh, working on this book is, is, uh, is, fo is as follows. I've taught church history for many, many years, and uh, I actually wanted to do a book that I thought would capture sort of the flow of church history in a way where we could see God at work, see the history of revivals, uh, talk about social history, but at the same time honor the men and women, boys and girls who serve the Lord well, so that we're putting together a, a type of book that's a little bit different than just a straight secular church history. It's a book, I hopefully, with Christian passion and, uh, and feeling in it so that people understand that there's some wonderful folks who've been uh, come before us, and they can see the history of the church as a resource for them. There's awful lot of modeling. That's one of the things that's really attracted me to studying church history. Why is it that certain people were set apart to be used to the Lord? And I, and I think that when you study church history, you get a good sense of who are those folks who serve the Lord well, and, and, and sometimes they did so in difficult circumstances. 